but as we see there is a large technological gap between the Indians and the Westerners. So what changes should be made to the Indian education system including the mind sciences so that we can bridge that gap, uh, uh, so that we can introduce the mind sciences from a basic level. Excellent point. That Indian mind sciences are, these are Indian mind sciences and they're taught in the West. They're not taught here so much. And that's because we haven't understood the economic value, the education value, the management value, the creative value. Once Indian corporates begin to shift into creative R&D, original thinking, they will like these people. Because when you go to Google, okay, they have, they have the IIT guys, of course, but they also have a lot of other kinds of very creative people in, in senior positions who did some engineering, but they also did these kind of things to become very creative. They are into design, they are into, you know, breakthrough ideas, out of the box thinking and so on. Things which you can't deduce logically, analytically, algorithmically, but things that uh, come to you as a, as a aha. So that has not been appreciated by Indian corporates because we are into tech, what I call tech coolies. We are tech coolies, a nation of tech coolies selling this stuff because we have cheap labor. If you keep doing that, your labor will never, your wages will never be on par with the world average because nobody will hire you. The only reason to hire is to save money. So it has to be a fraction and that means uh, we'll never advance in terms of, uh, we'll just keep growing the population, always have poor people that can be hired at lower prices. This is not nation building strategy. You have to be innovative, filing original ideas and to do, once they start doing that, they will then want to hire people with this kind of background. They will be looking, okay, you have a major in computer science, a minor in mind sciences. Uh, you have a major in electrical engineering or rocket science, but you've also had an ex history or, or an, some experience of something else which will bring creativity into you. Be remember that the age of innovation in India has, was there until a few hundred years ago. These people were very deeply involved in such things, very deeply involved in such things. One of the projects my foundation did is called History of Indian Science and Technology. There is a 30 volume Chinese history of science and technology which was done and when they study China they look at that as part of Chinese history. But nobody had compiled a history of Indian science and technology. So my foundation decided we will do 20 volumes on history of Indian science and technology and after since 2000, we've been working on it, and we produced nine volumes. It takes many years to do a volume. And when you look at these volumes, you realize that Indians were not just, uh, you know, mystical and kind of people like they say, but Indians were very advanced in metallurgy, steel, zinc distillation, in city building, architecture, medicine, textiles, water management, civil engineering systems, on and on way ahead of other people. So obviously, it, it's a society which had the inner dimensions of investigation, research, mind development, and was able to produce outer success. It was not that this inner journey makes you run away into some cave, but these people were also very practical and very progressive. So somehow, we stopped doing that. So I think we need to start doing that. That's the answer. Thank you very much.